Hi, I'm Robin Spear, and I'm going to be talking about how text breaks and how to fix it. So mojibake is the phenomenon when text ends up with the wrong Unicode characters in it due to an encoding mistake. Uh, and FTFY is a Python library that I developed over several years that uh, understands in several cases how to fix these characters. So here's an example of what FTFY can do. It can take this mess and understand it as the French sentence that it was actually supposed to be, even though one of the words got extremely mangled. So uh, let me introduce the, the mascot of FTFY, who is this little guy. Um, this actually comes from this text that I found in the wild. And if you use FTFY to decode the multiple layers of mistakes that happen to this text, you can see the face that it was actually intended to be. And I like this guy because you know he's giving you a really, you can do it face. Um, and uh, it's the result of actually decoding some very messed up text. So let's go back to a simpler time when one byte represented one character. And this meant that there were at most 256 possible characters of text that you could rep represent on any given computer. And let's hack up some quick Python code that's going to show us tables of these characters. So a very straightforward character table is called ASCII. Um, and these are 128 of these uh, characters that we agreed on uh, back in the 60s. And we can all agree on what byte corresponds to what character as long as it's uh, one, of the, one of the 128 characters in ASCII. And if it's one of the other bytes, then there is, then ASCII just doesn't say what it means. And this is a set of characters that works out pretty well, especially if you're a monolingual American. But there are many more things that you're going to do with text. And eventually, you're going to realize that you need more characters than that, and especially if you're speaking other languages. So people started talking about the idea of extended ASCII, um, where we could use the other 128 bytes as characters also. And extended ASCII just means whatever my computer does with the other bytes. And it's going to differ from one computer to another, because it could be from a different country, so using a different character set. It could be running a different OS. And this is how Mojibake started. Let's take a look at these different extensions of ASCII, which are called code pages. So a code page you might be familiar with is Windows 1252, uh, which uh, would be used on English copies of Windows. Um, wait, actually, wait, I missed one. Here's Latin 1. This is a very straightforward code page because it's the first 256 characters of Unicode. Um, and so it's very easy to implement by accident. If you don't really know about uh, Unicode and you just replace every byte with the Unicode character with the same number, you end up getting Latin 1. And I labeled two of these rows as here be dragons because those are two rows of the table that are full of control characters that nobody ever agreed on what they do, even when it became an ISO standard. And Windows 1252 fills in those rows with more punctuation characters, curly quotes, bullets, things that ended up being useful on Windows. Um, but that's only on Windows. If you were looking at uh, the 256 characters you have available in DOS, then you would end up with, uh, with this different character set, which has all these line art characters in it, and yet another character set if you're using Mac OS Classic. And if, for example, you had a Russian version of Windows and you have this character set, which has the Cyrillic alphabet in it, which is, of course, very important for writing in Russian. So clearly, the situation is unsustainable. And you know, Unicode came along and said, you know, hey, it turns out there are one, way more than 256 characters. Uh, but Unicode was originally uh, hard to use because it wasn't compatible with ASCII. And UTF-8 is a great idea, which is, what if we leave ASCII alone, and instead of using those 120 other bytes as just 128 more characters, what if we use them as a variable length encoding for the entire rest of Unicode? And there are some really great ideas in UTF-8, uh, such as not overlapping with ASCII ever, uh, and also uh, being self-synchronizing. It's got patterns in its bytes that uh, tell you where each character begins and ends. And so if you jump into the middle of a UTF-8 string, you can tell where the start and end of each character is in the bytes. And so everybody adopted these great ideas and used UTF-8, right? Well, no, of course, it's not that simple, especially because Microsoft had just done all that work to make Windows support Unicode, and all of their APIs use UTF-16, which is more difficult to use. And so this provides more opportunities for Mojibake. So let's have some more code that's going to show us the sequence of bytes that uh, represent each character in UTF-8. So if you take this name, L'Hopital, um, we can look at it in UTF-8. And the uh, simple letters uh, that are ASCII letters are single bytes. 
uh, but this uh, curly quote uh, turns into three bytes, and the O with an accent on it turns into two bytes. And so if you've got text that's in UTF-8, um, you can encode it as bytes, and somebody can, else can decode it as UTF-8 and get the same text. But if they decode it as a different character set, uh, then they're going to end up with something like this, with a bunch of miscellaneous symbols in it that weren't intended, and that's mojibake. And any mistake that you can make with a computer can also be repeated. So um, you end up with these pileups of mojibake where the same encoding and decoding mistakes get uh, iterated. And the fortunate thing here is because of the self-synchronizing nature of UTF-8, we can recognize the uh, patterns that it leaves behind because the patterns of bytes that make up UTF-8 show up as distinct patterns of characters in the mojibake. So um, this uh, second string here with all of the uh, square root signs and not signs in it is sending us a big, a huge signal that like, hey, this is actually supposed to be uh, UTF-8, but it came out in Mac OS Roman. And when we see a pattern like that, we encode as whatever the other encoding was and decode it as UTF-8 and presumably get out what the text was expected to be. So we can take that example um, and we can decode it, encode it as Macroman, decode it as UTF-8, and get this, which is still mojibake, because it turns out that we need to do that again, and we need to do it again. And after decoding three layers of mojibake, we get the text that was intended. But this is a job that the computer can do for us. So here's some code to use FTFY and format its output nicely. And we can put the text into FTFY. And so the first example here, um, it shows us that this was that what you need to do with this text is encoded as Mac Roman and decoded as UTF-8 three times. In this other example, um, it turns out that all of this mojibake was just one apostrophe, um, and you need to uh, encode it as uh, something like Windows 1252 and decode it as UTF-8 three times, and maybe even uncurl the curly quote at the end if you want. And this is an example I love because they said, I just figured out how to tweet emojis. And then they hadn't quite figured out how to tweet emojis uh, because they're tweeting through something that used a broken implementation of UTF-8 and also somehow came out as Latin 1 instead. But if we recognize that, we can figure out what the, what the emoji were actually intended to be. Now, we can't just apply this to every string that looks like it could have been UTF-8, because we don't want to have false positives. There are combinations of symbols that could have been UTF-8, but are actually what you meant in the text. So you could be writing in capital letters uh, with accents next to punctuation, or you could actually be talking about the square root of pi. And uh, we don't want to replace every instance of one of these with a different character. You would get examples that are wrong, like these down here at the bottom of the screen. So it's important for mojibake to have a regular expression that uh, can uh, detect when something is likely to be mojibake. Um, and so we call us the badness metric. Um, and so it looks for things like these improbable combinations with accented letters next to particular currency signs, or maybe unpopular punctuation like the Pilcrow sign uh, next to another uh, character uh, that comes from one of these character sets. And with this big regular expression, we can recognize um, patterns like this. So in this string, three out of the four of the instances of mojibake match the regular expression, and they all have the same explanation for what went wrong with them, and we can use that to just fix the entire string. So this is a heuristic that I've been hand tuning for several years, and people have asked me, well, you know, you know machine learning, why doesn't FTFY use machine learning? Um, and I don't think I'd be able to keep the rate of false positives this low using machine learning. It's very hard to explain to machine learning the idea of an error rate of once in several gigabytes of multilingual text. And also, in my experience with language models, they have a tendency to kind of homogenize text to make it say what they expect it says instead of what it actually says. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to cause more problems using FTFY. And so that's why I tune it by hand instead of using machine learning. But let's talk about some of the root causes of mojibake. And I identify three causes that I encounter over and over. One of them is Microsoft Excel. The second one in general is programming language APIs that uh, uh, confuse you about how to use Unicode and let you mix up bytes and text. And the third one that I run into a surprising amount is an outdated heuristic called Chardet. Let's take a look at that. So Chardet originated as part of Netscape Navigator in 1998. 
And in the 90s, uh, because there were all these different code pages that people were sending around uh, text in, you needed to be able to guess based on completely unlabeled bytes what encoding it was in. Uh, the problem is that the assumptions uh, come from the 90s, and these assumptions aren't necessarily true anymore. Um, Chardet doesn't know that the correct answer to what encoding is this is usually UTF-8, and it's never seen an emoji. So um, if you show it the bytes that make up an emoji, it thinks that there's some kind of Turkish. But the biggest problem is Microsoft Excel, because there have been so many different ways to export supposedly plain text CSVs from Microsoft Excel over the uh, many decades of its existence. And Microsoft never breaks backwards compatibility with anything. So if you're trying to export a CSV, you have all of these options for how you could export text from, uh, from Excel. And if you want to use UTF-8, every single one of these options is wrong, even the one that says Unicode text. And I know that you might have to use Excel sometimes, but if, you're, if you want to make a CSV file uh, to have comma-separated plain text, I strongly recommend that you use LibreOffice or Google Spreadsheets instead, because they can handle UTF-8. In general, I've got a recommendation for how to avoid Mojibake uh, being produced by your code. Um, because if you use English a lot, you might go for a long time without noticing Mojibake because all the ASCII characters are still right. But the good news is emoji are everywhere and people expect them to work and they uh, are a really good test of your Unicode. So my recommendation is use lots of emoji, put them in your code, your UIs, definitely put them in your test cases uh, and make sure that they come out right. And it won't even look weird because people use emoji all the time anyway. Uh, this is similar to uh, the way web frameworks used to put extra parameters in the URL, like snowman equals this picture of a snowman, um, because then the web framework could uh, make sure that the browser had to use UTF-8 and detect if it came out wrong. And that's what I've got to say right now. Uh, here is some extra information about FTFY and about myself. Thank you.